I find myself sitting on stage defending incels. I do completely take your point, Miriam, about the fact that, that cost, people living in stressful conditions is not, is not liable to produce, you know, um, erotic enjoyment. Uh, people have always shagged, though. You know, in, 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 in every possible era, people have, have found ways to, to have children in really difficult circumstances um, and to have non-reproductive sex as well. Whereas there is something about modernity, because it's not just us, right? It's not just the UK that's seen this sex recession. I, uh, East Asian countries like South Korea and Japan are much more profoundly affected by, by this trend. Um, we see it across other developed countries and in America and Canada and so on. There's something going on, and, I, and I, I can't help but think that it just has something to do with affluence, because that's the common theme across all of those countries. It's not to do with a particular religious tradition or really any kind of unifying political ideology even. I mean, I don't, I'm not sure if you can really understand, say, Japan as being a liberal country. It's, kind of, it's, so, it's so different, it's, it almost doesn't work. It, but there's, these are all rich countries. And is there maybe something, cost of living accepted, is there maybe something about having an something about late modernity which makes people lonely and it's not just to do with um, sexual relationships it's to do with all kinds of relationships you know the proportion of people who live on their own has gone up so steeply I was looking up these figures last week just since the 1970s the proportion of people who live on their own has doubled um, this is largely a story of the elderly but it's also middle-aged and younger people who are living on their own I mean I really appreciate Zoe saying that and, and unwittingly maybe echoing the words of Hugh Hefner, he was once asked, um, do you think, how do you feel about the dark consequences of the sexual revolution that you set in train? And he said, it's, the pri it's a price worth paying for sexual freedom. And I think, you know, maybe it is. Maybe that, that is the choice that we're faced with and maybe we should be honest about it and say, I guess I was just we choose freedom yeah. maybe. It's an Sorry. I was just, this is my query with all this. I see a lot of people who choose to opt out of hookup culture. I don't, I don't quite understand why there's this idea that there is an, I think there's been a, a, a slippage here between real regimes of control and just cultural ones. And I think like the fact that, you know, and, and, I, and I am critical of the whole like, if I pull dance, I'm liberated, you know, I, I, you know, I choose my choice and that's a politics. No, not, probably not. But, but I do think there's, there's something that bothers me about the whole discussion, I suppose, which is this idea that we are dupes, we have no agency, we are living through false consciousness um, it, it, to become like these like, hookup culture uh, victims. And you know, we, we probably all do, it is hard to sidestep that. I mean, there is such thing as, as cultural pressure. And, and, and so there, is, there, is, there are scar tissues that develop and baggage that develops. But I think it's a bit more, comp it's a bit more nuanced than hookup culture has come along and destroyed you know, all these things. I, I think a lot of people are, are finding other ways to do things. Um, but I, I just want to say, I think that the big word we might be missing here is the I word, the internet, which I think has definitely played, it, to me, there's a sort of dynamic, um, there's, there's a certain kind of sensibility shift that occurs when you spend enough time of your time, um, you know, doing whatever different social media platforms, including dating apps, require of you. And the thing that I've always noted about dating app behavior recently, or in the last, you know, however many years, um, I only started researching, looking on dating apps after I did an MPhil all about online dating. So I thought, oh, I should get over it. But that was the year Tinder launched. But there's a kind of jadedness. And I think this thing, I, I actually don't agree that it's, um, so I think, I think certain internet formats breed a kind of, eh, well, we all know that. But I don't think that it's about rich countries. I don't think it's about affluence that is this issue. I think it's about genuinely li liberal countries. Like we are a li politically liberal country. And that therefore leads to a marketplace in which there is plenty. So as soon as you have plenty, sexual plenty. So one of the countries in the world where dating apps are the biggest sellers in China, which many things, but it's certainly not a liberal country, but it is a place where people are basically finding that actually 
in also a place full of urban anomie with new cities springing up you know every five minutes they can't find and in a, in a world you know of one one child policy yeah, and the old so, so much pressure to get married for women I mean I don't think it is yeah there's the dating apps but I, I would I would guess that the the experience of that 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 jaded sense of overabundance that we are talking about would play out differently in an environment where women are under huge stress to get married and to and to make an economic decision we we don't quite have that so I think it is probably different by yeah but sorry just Ooh, on this, on this yeah, idea of abundance I have to like push back as a woman or, like on dating apps is there an abundance from a male perspective of course there is they're flipping through like who can I fuck if you're actually looking for anything more than that which I think by and large women do there's a study that came out last year looking at like satisfaction rates for casual sex amongst men and women and <laughs> I mean, I, I thought I'd bring them out because it just was very Please. interesting to me. So casual sex generally leads to more positive emotional outcomes for men than for women. Anyone surprised? Probably not. But the, both reports engaging in both report in, engaging in sexual in casual sex. But women are more likely to report feeling miserable, lonely, and pressured, and having more negative outcomes like loneliness and unhappiness and rejection. Men are more likely to report positive emotional outcomes with casual sex. The report concludes that women are engaging in casual sex in the hope of finding a partner. Men are engaging in casual sex in the hope of finding several partners. There is a stark difference. When we swipe, we're hoping for the one. They're hoping for the many. Ooh, it's abundance that, yeah. for them. <laughs> no, I, 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 I just don't. I just don't think that's true. That as a generalization, are, yeah, of course it's not everyone. I th but I think there's definitely something. I'm not going to deny that. That I think you're right. That that casual sex. I mean, this is there's nothing new about that. Plays out differently for men and women. That's true. But I think so much in the narrative, me too, post me too, me too narratives assumes that women can never be driven by desire alone. Like for women, it must always be attached to this bigger emotional edifice of commitment. And I, I do struggle with that. I think who are we to know? There, there is, there is, if you really don't believe there's such thing as autonomous female desire that can exist as a kind of thing that needs to be dealt with and that that's only a masculine thing. I, I just don't think that's, that, I don't think that's true. I, uh, it doesn't mean that women should therefore have to experience callous, callousness and bad treatment, which I think does happen more as a result of hookup culture. But my concern about this idea, like imagine we had this world or potential utopia where we got rid of dating apps and we got rid of casual sex. And this idea that women will wait until there's the one. So many women do not find the one. And then are they supposed to just be nuns? But, but no, 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 hold on. You're confusing sexual desire on this occasion with having a fucking orgasm, which is a big difference. Like on this occasion, women going for casual hookups, by and large, we know, you're not getting your dues. You're not, you're not. They're getting theirs, you're not getting yours. So as a rule, we're not getting ours. So we are looking for someone who's invested enough to actually want to do the work necessary to deliver the goods. And unfortunately, the truth is, many of you don't. Um, I want to bring in Louise here because apart from the else, Louise has actually written an entire book which is taking issue with many aspects of the sexual, rev sexual revolution yeah. as it's emerged particularly in Britain since the 1960s. Is the conversation you're hearing, Louise, between uh, Miriam and uh, Zoe, one that strikes a chord with the thesis that you've put forward? Uh, very much so, and I think also that your, the two positions are reconcilable. Absolutely. In, in, to the extent that obviously individual preference varies a great deal in there. I, I, I mean. Average differences in um, sociosexuality, so that's your desire to have casual sex. They're two bell curves, the male and the female one, they overlap. Very, very horny people are much more likely to be male and vice versa, but clearly there's, there are a lot of individual exceptions to that rule, but also at the population level, you're completely right, say that that, that is really evident in hookup culture. Um, it's worth saying, I find myself sitting on stage defending incels. It is worth saying, <laughs> that actually most men do not experience hyperabundance on dating apps because the, the nature of how dating apps operate is that women tend to be, as a rule, lots of exceptions, yada yada, throat clearing, women tend to be more drawn to status than are men um, and men tend to be more drawn to looks than state. So men are basically, I mean, we all know the stereotype of the the ugly rich guy with the gorgeous wife. There's, there's a reason that that stereotype exists, it's because it does to some extent 
demonstrate slightly different drives among men and women. And it means that women, for instance, are, are are more likely to, on dating apps, accumulate their their likes towards the most high-status men on the apps and ignore the sort of bottom 90%. So I think the figure on Tinder is it's the 10% most attractive men are getting 60% of likes. Um, so they are experienced, absolutely, they are experiencing hyperabundance. And they are also experiencing a social environment in which they can basically do what they want. Yeah. And there are no real consequences. And obviously contraception means in practical terms there are no consequences. And also socially there are no consequences from ghosting, from all of these things, which the internet enables. Because you're now able to basically pluck out strangers from your 10 mile radius in a huge city like London. And you never have to see them again. You have, so you have no social connection to them. Cheating therefore becomes much easier because you don't have to cheat with people that you actually have any social connection with, so you can get away with it. You know, there are all sorts of bad behaviours which are definitely enabled by the apps. Um, there are also bad behaviours that 90% of men actually don't really have access to, <laughs> even if they would, even if they might like to, because they're not getting as much attention as they would hope. And this is, of course, why we, part of the reason why we have all of these young men who are um, remaining virgins, not having relationships, feeling very feeling very unhappy about it and I think often being unfairly maligned as political extremists or whatever when many of them are just unlucky. C could I just come in with a, a counterintuitive question which may be counterintuitive because it, it, it doesn't have any basis but ju just to ask Louise, is there any social good overall that you could see from the statistical reality that seems to be emerging that at least in the UK in the 2020s people are having, young people are having less sex than would have been the case with their predecessor generations. Is there any upside to it at all? Well, there's also a lot less teen pregnancy. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.